This is part two of our automating a service manager using Power WF. In the last video, we created this workflow, which created a number of test instances in our service manager. And we're going to use this uh, workflow and this following one. If you remember right, well, our goal is to create a management pack that auto closes these when they're inactive for a period of time. And you know, I found this excellent resource on the net, uh, Andre's blog, and he has a lot of great information about service manager. In fact, here he has a little bit. Uh, explaining how to use the uh, commandlets to do exactly what I'm doing. So let's start with Power WF. So I'm going to create a new uh, service manager um, workflow. I'm going to call it auto close. And since we're in video time, I'm going to make it 30 seconds. Um, obviously, you would make in real world, you would make that a lot different, maybe once a day or several times a day. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a pipeline. And a pipeline is a PowerShell term which takes the result of one commandlet and pipes it into another commandlet. And so um, since we're working with incidents, I'm just going to type that in. And I'm going to get uh, an incidents. And first I need to specify my server name as always because I am running this remotely. And the status is I'm going to look for all resolved ones. Now, what you would probably specify here is an active for a period of time, and this is a time span, so like two hours or you know 12 hours. Uh, since we're in video time, I'm going to leave this blank um, just to keep things moving along. The next thing I would do is I'm going to set all these resolved ones. I'm going to set their status to close, and maybe give a comment. I'll close. Of course, I need to specify my server. And that's good enough for now. Now, I am going to disable that for my initial testing. So let's uh, just right mouse click and disable it now. And I know what I want to do is I want to um, get these and I want to send a report to my manager daily on what I auto closed. So I'm going to right mouse click in here. And if you go under Show Common, you'll see a number of common properties. Now what I'm looking for is this out variable. And what this allows you to do is take the results of this and not only pipe it down to the set incidents, but also store that results in a variable. So I'm going to set it in, it in that variable. And then I'm going to get it back out after the pipeline. So I'm going to do a get variable. Pretty straightforward. And, uh, and I just want the value, value only versus um, the PS variable. In the first test, I'm going to just throw this into a data grid um, just to make sure that I'm getting my data correctly. It seems pretty straightforward. Let's hit play. And there's all the um, currently resolved instances sitting up there waiting to be uh, closed. So the next step is I want to create a little report. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use our um, uh, what is it? select data. What this allows me to do is specify the columns of information I want. So I'm going to um, I just dragged it over and I'm going to click on the columns and I'm going to say maybe I want to see the display name, title. Description, data priority, impact. That looks pretty reasonable. And my last step is um, what I want to do is I want to format this to HTML because I know I want to be end up sending this as an email, and I'd like a nice little HTML format email. So I'm going to drag it over. And, uh, if, and I'm going to just give it a auto close subheading here. I'm going to rename this. And uh, yeah, there's a number of style options. I feel like I'm in Onyx mood today. So we'll pick Onyx. Um, and we're going to throw this to the browser just to make sure everything looks good. 
We'll play one more time. And there's a nice little report. So that looks like, uh, looks good. Now I would know that this is going to be running at a period of time, and then sometimes there's not going to be any, um, any instances that resolve this. And I don't want to spam myself. So let's put an if then in here. So I'm just going to look for if then. If I can type if then. I'm going to grab this PowerShell if then. And I'm going to drag it right here. Now I know I don't need both branches, so I'm just going to delete this branch. And I'm going to specify a condition. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at that PowerShell variable that we got back. And if the count is greater than zero, then I want to do this. In other words, I've, I've closed some. And now I can just simply just lasso a number of these guys. And I'll just drag them into here. So pretty simple to do. Um, so let's do one more test to make sure we did what we thought we did. That looks pretty good. The last thing I'd want to do is make sure um, that we're closing them properly, so I'm going to enable that. So that still looks good. If I jump over to my service manager and refresh the view, I see everybody's closed. So my if then worked as planned. So what I would probably do at the end is I would delete this guy and I would drag over send mail and I would fill out all this information. I'm going to create a couple more test instances here. We'll count OK. And there we have a report. Then we look down. And that looks pretty good. So my uh, final step would be now is to create a management pack is as simple as going to our wizard. So we create a management pack, auto close, specify the server we want. It's going to validate to make sure it's a proper host. Hit next, next. Now I'm going to skip ahead in the video here so um, so you don't have to sit around and wait for this to run. So after we had a period of time, you can see that the report actually auto-closed and we got a report as we planned. So it's pretty straightforward to, you know, here we've, in our workflow, we've leveraged a number of different, uh, from PowerShell to some of our Windows workflow that are shipped with PowerWF to accomplish the task. Thanks for watching.